Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Josh with the Get Business Credit YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over the Wayfair Professional Business Credit Card. They have two different cards, the Flex account, and that's a 60-day payment terms. And then they have a 2% rewards Wayfair Professional card, and it's a revolving card. I'm going to tell you the data points on both of them, which one's easier to get approved than the other. You guys might have seen a video that I did a couple days ago about the Wayfair card reason why I'm redoing the video is because you might notice if you watch that video, halfway through, I started getting into the data points. The audio had problems. It started having like sounding like I was underwater. So that's why I'm redoing this video. Anyway, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Before I do, please hit the subscribe button. If you're not already a subscriber, give the video a thumbs up. If you do find it helpful, I'd appreciate it. For those that are in, say, real estate, home flipping, Airbnb, anything like that, or any way that you could possibly use any home decor, furniture, different things like that. Uh, it's not for everybody. So if this isn't suitable for you, don't even apply for it. And stay until the end because I'm gonna go over the data points. I don't want you to apply for something if you're not ready for it, okay? So let's just jump right into it. As you can see here, the Wayfair Professional, it's not wayfair.com. The link will be in the description. It's a free account to sign up for, Lex account or the credit card account. But I'm just saying that's what you get included with the Wayfair Professional account. You get a dedicated account manager and you get discounts. They give you uh, corporate discounts. So as you can see right here, it shows the two different cards, right? But take a notice on this, it's Wayfair Professional and then it has Capital One, right? So why I'm pointing that out is I'm trying to teach you guys to understand when you're applying for, you know, all these different business cards, especially the no PG ones, that it would help you and increase your chances of approval if you understood the underwriters. And okay, before I get into the final data points, I'm just going to go over the comparison of both cards, and then you can make your decision on which one is best for you if you're going to apply for these. Okay, they're both no PG, obviously. So they have the Wayfair Professional Capital One Business Credit Card. You get 2% back in Wayfair Rewards. Not really sure what that equates to exactly on a monetary value. And that's a revolving account. I wouldn't revolve this one even if you get it because it is high APR. I think it's around 26%. And then you have the Wayfair Professional Capital One Flex account. This is like similar to the, say the Lowe's uh, issued by Synchrony, underwritten through Synchrony. It's a net 60 days payment terms so you need to pay every 60 days i will tell you on the data point wise the flex account 60 days you're going to have an easier chance to get approved for now, depending on your situation the revolving card might be better for you if you meet certain requirements i'm about to tell you but this is basically the comparison between the two cards the link will be in the description below you can uh, review that always do your own research and check things out before you go to apply but anyways, let's jump over the application real quick. Okay, so you can notice here at the top, it says tradecredit.capitalone.com. So just so you guys know, like I said, always focus on understanding each of the underwriters, like Synchrony, Citibank, uh, there's, you know, Capital One Trade Credit, Blue Tarp, MSTS, all those, there's so many of them, but that's how I was able to get approved for so many accounts is because I studied each underwriter. Each underwriter looks for different things, than others. So Synchrony, you know, they're looking for more trade lines, not so much the time in business versus say Citibank, Citibank's looking for three years in business does not matter. You need to have three years in business. They'd be able to get approved for any of their no PG cards. Now, Capital One trade credit, this is like kind of in between. They're in between like say Synchrony and uh, Citibank as far as difficulty. But the application is pretty self-explanatory. Fill all that information uh, about yourself and your business rule. But under business information, make sure that you're using exact spelling, everything, address, verbatim, what's on your Experian business credit report because who they're actually pulling from to make the decision if they're gonna approve you or not, all right? So all this is pretty self-explanatory and don't get kind of crazy with requests on too high of a dollar amount. Monthly business spend at merchant. I wouldn't really put very high unless you can justify spending that much. All right, here's another thing you guys need to remember too before I go any further. So many viewers think, and there's so much bad information out there on the internet 
that's why I'm making these videos to correct a lot of the information. But so many YouTubers and people in groups, Facebook groups, they always are given the impression to new business owners when you're trying to build business credit that just get as high credit line as you can, as many trade lines, you know, that's going to help you build up your business credit. That's not true at all. That's completely false. In fact, say you apply and get this for say 30,000, uh, that's your approval limit, right? Don't think that 30,000 is going to be reported to the business credit bureaus. It's not, it could be just reported as just an account, but it's not going to show 30,000 and nor is anybody going to see that $30,000 approval period. Um, other lenders not going to be able to see that either. What only gets reported to the business credit bureaus is what counts is the usage. So if you spent say 2000 one month, that's going to be reported to Experian Dun & Bradstreet as a payment or not a payment, but a usage of $2,000. So it's going to show your high balance of $2,000 if that's what you spent, right? That's what matters to other lenders is, you know, how much you're spending and how much you're paying back. I guess what my point is, don't chase all these trade lines that are just, you're going to get approved. You pay $50, $75 or something for a trade line besides with exception to like say e-credible and NAV, right? But other than them, um, others, you could pay for those trade lines, say like t-shirt club, different ones like that report to Equifax. Those are fine in your strategy on building business credit. But if you have say 10 trade lines reporting to the business credit bureaus and they're all like U lines, Grangers that you're spending only like 50 or hundred dollars being reported of, you know, usage, that's not going to help you, you know, really get high limit in the future for no PG business credit, right? It's not going to really help you. Um, because they're looking at is you just have a whole bunch of small accounts. These accounts are good for, you know, having a good mixture on business credit, you know, showing, you know, vendor accounts, trade lines, you know, aged ones, financial, you want to have a good mix, but you don't want to just have a strategy to get as many as you can and that's it, you know, without a strategy, right? So just always keep that in mind. All right. My point on that is the monthly spend, don't put some crazy high amount. All right. I would put anywhere from like 1500 to uh, say 5000 somewhere in that ballpark. Also think about your gross annual business revenue. If you're only putting down, say your revenue is only 50000 a year, don't sit there and ask for 10000 because they're not going to give that to you, okay? So it needs to be, you know, uh, balanced, right? Keep, keep that in mind. Uh, that's pretty much it on the application goes. Now, those that should not apply. You need to be in business, I would say, at least two years. I've seen a couple of people get approved under two years, you know, me included, but that was a couple of years ago, you know, so they might have changed things. It seems like they're tightening up a bit, but don't apply unless you're at least two years in business and have at least four to six business trade lines reporting on Experian and at least three or four on Dun & Bradstreet, all right? So that's it. The link is in the description below. All right. And if you're interested in my business credit one-on-one -on -one mentorship, I have a few slots available. You can text me at the number below 937-423-9954. And we can do a free consult and see if you're right fit for my business credit mentorship. All that being said, you guys take care. I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to this video.